I would like to welcome each and every one of you here to this very important meeting of Caribbean climate change negotiators. I think it would be preaching to the converted to say that climate change is very real and it is a matter of the highest urgency and priority for, for member states, for small island developing states in particular. We are all aware of the challenges that we face due to our small size, our geographic location, small economies, limited infrastructure, and our high vulnerability to environmental hazards and economic pressures. Coupled with this, uh, climate change and sea level rise that are threatening our very existence, the devastating effects of natural disasters and grappling with other socioeconomic challenges such as crime and high employment, unemployment. All of these challenges serve to erode the development gains and possibly set back our development by years or even decades. I was saying to some of the colleagues here this morning that for me it is absolutely critical that we gathered here as Caribbean negotiators for climate change take to task very seriously the responsibility that we have on our shoulders. You've heard from Leon and some of, um, some of the others who may have spoken about the efforts made before in Samoa. It was really amazing to see the synergy between some of our development partners and the Caribbean in order to establish some rationality. Um, climate change is not my area, but one of the things I've observed over the last 30 years of being engaged at regional and international levels is that from time to time there are these issues that surface as high priority issues. You know, at one time it could be something in education or gender, now it's climate change. And when these priorities emerge, what we see happening is a convergence of, if there's sufficient attention to it, a convergence of excitement and interest by a range of partners. Um, once the money starts to flow in that direction, we see a plethora of Greeks bearing gifts coming in, seeking to appropriate the agenda. And I'm saying this because I think it is really critical that the Caribbean negotiators shape a coherent and convergent Caribbean agenda, a framework around which we can all agree. And that framework has to be flexible enough to allow us to work together at a regional level in, with increasing unity and convergence, but also allow for distinctions and idiosyncrasies between member states. Because if we try to do a one-size-fits-all, a single template, that is going to be fraught with problems. Um, the, the second reason, too, is that we need to also be in a position where we can be very clear, we need to be very clear about what our best interests are going to be in this whole climate change arena. What are the things that we would like to get out of this? And how do we roll out from the level of the international level of treaties and protocols and funding mechanism, mechanisms to make a difference on the ground in the member states? Where the rubber hits the road with climate change is at the level of the coastal villages, the people who are prone to floods, to disasters. We've seen every year increasing levels of disaster in our member states, the impact of hurricanes and so on. And so it is incumbent on us not just to work at the level of regional protocols and international relations, but also to translate all of this at a local level as well. The contradictions at the local level need to be faced squarely. There are, there's a great deal of work, aside as onerous as the work you are going to be doing here is going to be, there's an even larger body of work that needs to be done at the level of various member states to bring a lot of our building codes, um, so many other protocols and laws and mechanisms in line with the principles of adaptation to climate change. If that work is not done, notwithstanding whatever funding we receive, whatever international support, it will all be undone by the absence of national preparation. So I would like to punctuate those things today and to ask that we pay attention to these matters. I also want to indicate the willingness of the OECS Commission to continue to play as supportive a role as is possible or as is required 
to ensure that this process proceeds apace. We have had discussions with the French. Um, you probably, some of you may know that Martinique has now um, joined the OECS as an associate member. The, meet, the, inter the next international meeting in Paris is being given the highest level of priority by the French. And they've said to us that they are willing to work with the OECS in particular to ensure that the concerns of member states of um, small island developing countries are brought a champion by no lesser person than the French president himself. So I think the group of us here working closely together and keeping together can make use of those windows of opportunity to ensure that the agenda in Paris adequately reflects the concerns, the views, and the aspirations of member states. Um, with that in mind, I'm not sure what mechanisms exist at the CARICOM level, but we are also willing to establish within the OECS, but not for the OECS, for the Caribbean as a whole, um, a live space, internet space, where persons involved in climate change, not only at your level, but right down to the grassroots level in the national spaces, can have this wide open forum for posting in up-to-date information, sharing ideas, discussing things, and so on. We have found this to be a very useful mechanism because when the Ebola threat started, one of the things we did was to convene all of the ministers of health in the OECS. Right now we have weekly meetings of health ministers together with the chief medical officers, the Ebola focal points, and PAHO and CAFA are also part of that. And we have online a forum that enables the sharing of information in real time. All sorts of multimedia information, documents, papers, positions, blog discussions go in. And this has been very helpful in helping the member states in their level of preparation for Ebola. And having reached a certain level of satisfaction with that preparation, we are now looking at, the, we are now moving the discussion beyond Ebola to how do we converge with international health regulations? How do we deal with infectious diseases? Because post Ebola, other diseases will come. So this forum is really creating a virtual space, like it's like a virtual town hall within which member states can actively engage at all levels and health personnel can be sharing ideas without regard to hierarchy, I might add, in a very productive manner. And we offer that same facility to you, the climate change negotiators. Um, we, as I said, we're very happy to be part of this process and we look forward to the outcomes of this and a continuing um, periodic sessions up to Paris and beyond. Thank you.